has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, snacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out the bench, eating broken, eating bad, I'm all the bad, I'm a dude hanging around 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 the bad, I'm a dude We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Barrella Boys, right across the river and through the woods from where Granny loves a little 22 OG in the kind of New York City. Big apple. <clears throat> People dress in plastic bags, the red traffic, some kind of fashion thing. I'm up in the rough about to find a party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown. What a mess is Taz and Ted. My brains are splattered all over Manhattan. I am realizing that everyone lost their simple ways. And now that I see it oh so clearly, my beer told me I've come face to face with the enemy. With the enemy. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver High with his green jacket on for the Masters all week long. Mobby running it with Luke. I am your Baba. A birthday roll call on a thrashing Thursday. How about this one? Brett Saberhagen, 60. Trevor Linden, 54. Jason Veritek, boo, 52. Trot Nixon, boo, 50. Mark Teixeira, 44. Ramon Sessions, 38. Kenta Maeda, 36. Loop. Jake Luton, 28. Jake Browning, 28. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, 25. Son of a Knight, 23. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All I know is that Carver High has an 80 to 1 ticket on Ryan Fox as the first round leader at the Masters right now. Ryan Fox with a one stroke. Lead over Bryson DeChambeau through 12 holes for Fox, 13 holes for DeChambeau, and the wind is a whipping at Augusta National. So good luck to the afternoon crowd shooting a five under. We'll see if the 80 to one can cash for your boy Carver High. We've got day ball going on. The Mets lead the Braves 8-3 to three in hot town. Top of the seven, two on, two out runners in second and third. How about the Royals? They've won six in a row. They're up nine to nothing on the Astros. They were up nine nothing in the first inning. The A's lead the Rangers one nothing. Bottom two at Globe Life. Everything else is at night. OJ is dead. OJ Simpson dead at 76 allegedly passes away from cancer, uh, surrounded by his family. Everyone uh, old enough to remember 1994. Uh, it divided a country, his trial, the trial of the century, with great defense lawyers conning the jury into believing that he didn't kill his wife and her friend, Ronald Goldman. They were both butchered in Brentwood, in Tony Brentwood. And they found them in pools of blood. Then, of course, he went on the run in the Bronco. Then went on trial. And then inexplicably won the trial and was found not guilty. (laughs) Ah, to humanity. Then eventually, in 07, he goes to prison for robbing a casino room full of artifacts and memorabilia. Does time, gets out. Hides, never pays anyone, the Goldmans, the $35 million he owed him after he was found guilty in a civil trial of their deaths, never gave anybody a penny, and now he's finally gone. OJ, dead at 76. Oh, they'll show all of his highlights from USC and the Buffalo Bills, but we'll all remember him as a double murderer. Won't we? We sure will. No one's dancing in the streets today except all the people that knew he killed them both. Even the brothers know he did it. They just wanted to have a party. You can quote me on that one, too. Marenzi joins us this very hour from Vancouver. Cleveland beat the White Sox in 10 last night. Bo Naylor with a walk-off. How about the Naylor brothers on National Sibling Day, both having home runs? The Marlins beat the Yankees 5-2. Jake Baconberger with a three-run shot. 
We got everything. Padres over the Cubs, 10 to 2. Cronenworth with a Jack. O's beat the Red Sox, 7 5. Jackson Holiday made his debut, had an RBI, turned a double play. Everyone's excited. Max Scherzer thinks he's close to a return for the Rangers until he's injured again. We got the best and worst money lines and over under teams in baseball, and tonight's games will break them down. Otani's former interpreter negotiating a plea deal, even though he's been found guilty of stealing. $16 million from Otani by the feds. $16 million, they said. And the Department of Justice says no evidence of gambling at all by Otani. He is walking away scot-free, clear of any charges. We got it all for you. Cuts from the early line today. We'll watch that. Plus, Scott Drew visits with Kentucky and leaves without the job and goes back to Waco where he belongs, where he won a natty and where they love him. Uh, who needs that stress? Kentucky did not hire Drew. Calipari stoked the start in Fayetteville. We got video of Coach Cal in red. Zach Eady wins the Wooden as the nation's top player again. Caitlin Clark, how about 36 out of 40 fever games will be on national television? And the NCAA talking about a rule to change uh, to allow unlimited transfers without sitting out. I thought they did that now. I've never seen anything like it, all these kids transferring every five minutes. We welcome our radio affiliates, Sirius XM Channel 159. Good to have you with us on satellite. And, of course, Sports Byline USA and all their affiliates out of San Francisco. Deepak holding it down for us. The Mavs humiliated the Heat last night. We got all the highlights. Suns beat the Clippers. Nuggets over to T-Wolves. Joker with 41. Cat may return for many this weekend. They only play Friday and Sunday. I still can't figure out why there's no games on Saturday. Can someone explain that to me? What is it, a holy day? Honestly, Thunder beat the Spurs last night. We got that. The Lakers and Warriors are locked into play-in games. That's automatic now. Bucks beat the Magic. Giannis out the rest of the regular season with a strained calf. Yada, yada, yada. Trey's back for the Hawks. Yada, yada. Drew Holiday, a four-year, $135 million extension with the Celtics. Maybe he's dancing in the streets today. Not over OJ, over all that money they just gave him. We got uh, Coach Young with the Lions share today, plus Davis Maddock and his favorite plays for a Thursday night. Today in Carver High, history gets everybody all jacked up. I know he did a sheet of integrity and all of his picks for the Masters yesterday when I was on community service. Tonight's NBA games will break it all down. The Knicks and Boston is uh, the featured attraction, plus uh, you get more. How about New Orleans, Sacramento, Golden State, Portland? Houston, Utah, and Salt Lake Shakers and the Bulls are in Detroit. We'll break down everything from Augusta, Tiger betting action, Tiger and Phil to make the cut. Ricky wins the par three. Woodland had a hole in one in the par three. They showed the Gary Woodland story on ESPN four million times since Sunday. And uh, I think it may have affected him. He's shooting like 90 over par today and will, will not make the cut. Your boy Carver, I'll give you details. Oilers beat Vegas last night. 5-1, that's all that mattered in hockey. Tonight, there's slews of games that matter. The Islanders host Montreal at the racetrack. Detroit's at Pittsburgh. Philly and the Rangers. All those games matter significantly. And uh, so does Washington Buffalo. We'll do it all, plus Adam Kaplan. Today, I'm coach to coach. Go with us. OJ's dead. can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 
going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Jason Tatum has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a four for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes Drew Holiday is not consistent. Al Horford father talking to catch up. That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Nick fan. I hate the Celtics with all of my might. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns them. They beat them five straight times. And Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But, without being stated, the total's up to seven and a half right now. I got to go under seven and a half here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Five minutes, fellas. Five minutes. I appreciate it, man. Oh, okay, you getting that bed in before the boom, oh, huh? Yeah, 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 LA all the way. <laughs> what? Oh, come on, man. You know it's Boston, baby. KG, I understand why you said it, but it's LA. Jay, are you serious? You know what? It's LA. Why are you standing up? Because it's LA. L- you know what? You ain't scared me. Let me tell you something. That is Boston, Boston, Boston. It's LA. It's incredible how uh, BetMGM has set up shop in North Carolina, and they're just giving away money and droves to people in the Carolinas. Use the bonus code GRID. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the Sportsbook mobile app at BetMGM for at least 5 bucks. You're going to get 150 instantly in bonus bets regardless of the uh, outcome of your wager. How to get the offer? Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or go to BetMGM.com, sign up, put five in your new account, place a wager in the amount of at least five standardized price on anything. Once you've placed a bet, you'll receive 100 million bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. You're loving life in the Carolinas. In North Carolina, you can now use BetMGM's mobile app, and you are going to be on top of the world. You're going to love it. Also, get the Sports Grid app. It's free on iOS or Android. Download the app. You're going to love it. You can follow your favorite hosts like Pharrell and Carver High. And uh, you can watch the network, listen to the network. It's unbelievable. Odds, in-game odds, stories, highlights, videos, scores. It's got it all. The Sports Grid app. All right. Live at the Masters, round one, Ryan Fox. All that matters is Carver High has a ticket on him at 80 to 1. DeShambo breathing down his neck. And right behind him, the worst winner in the history of Augusta, Danny Willett, <laughs> who should not be allowed to keep his green jacket, but he's there 
at three under. DeChambeau at four under. Fox at five under. What do you think of the day so far? A lot of wind at Augusta. Uh, I'm just happy, Scotty, that they got out as early as they did. We had all these guys on yesterday from Augusta. They're telling us how bad the weather would be in the morning. Might not start till 12, 2 o'clock. It would have been misery. But they started at 1030, and the conditions have been pretty good. It's very windy out there, but we want a tough challenge for the Masters. Ryan, crazy like a fox, who we mentioned yesterday here on Coast to Coast as a first-round leader at 80-1. to 1. Uh, is doing the job right now. He's having a little bit of trouble on 13, but he looks like he's going to be okay, Scotty, for a minimum a par uh, and to stay at five under. Danny Willett, as you just mentioned, just birdied to get to three under. He, of course, is a former champion here at Augusta. Bryson DeChambeau's playing good today. Here comes Corey Connors. Willie Z at two under, and Scotty Scheffler is at two under, who, of course, is the uh, heavy favorite to win, Scotty. And I just saw him. I'm sure you saw it, too, because I put the main uh, ESPN feed on. He absolutely piped a driver on eight. Like, I mean, he just absolutely flushed it like three, three and a uh, half. Your boy like Fox the just hit one in the drink. Oh, oh God. Man. He just chipped into Ray's Creek. Uh, well, it was fun for a little while that we had Ryan Fox. Oh, God, uh, into, in the the rocks, here. into the river, now, you into can't, the river. You Canyon. can't do that. You can't do that. You He hit such a nice shot. He was in the pine straw. He had an awful tee shot off of 13. Had a great shot out of the woods to give himself a chance. And for him to chunk that, uh, and they even got to show you the slow-mo of it rattling around in the <laughs> creek. Like, we get it. He hit it in the water. Uh, we don't need to uh, just add insult to injury. Well, Fox, at least it's a par five. Maybe he'll just bogey uh, and he can get to four <laughs> under here. Gary Woodland so. clip again. <laughs> get Gary back out there. Uh, there is plenty of guys out on the course. The only one I'd say, Scott, who's off to a slow start in terms of favorites, uh, Xander Shoffley's two over through seven. He has not played well. Hideki Matsuyama is two over through eight. Hasn't been great. And Rory's only one over, but he's kind of doing that Rory thing, Scotty, where he's like, he's hitting bad shots and he looks all exasperated. He looks like the whole world's on his shoulders. Uh, so Rory off to off to a tough start. I'm sick of hearing about Rory McIlroy and his fights with Liv and his, uh, hasn't won a major in 10 years and yeah, hasn't got the that. Masters and the career <laughs> Grand Slam. It's gotten so stale, that conversation. I mean, honestly. It has. It's gotten very stale, uh, and he needs to go and finally actually win one, and we'll be okay. Uh, Tiger tees off at 3.54 p.m. East. Uh, of course, they just showed him doing his uh, stretching expedition over on the practice green. Uh, they, he will become the main focus of this uh, main ESPN feed at about 4 o'clock. So he <laughs> they showed they show today more on the, the replay of 2019 <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> I mean, the they whole have. morning, all they talk about is Tiger Woods. That's yeah, it. He, that's no all, one else that's even matters. Rom won the thing last year, and they spent about two minutes talking to him about how he did it. And then everything else has been Gary Woodland's brain surgery and Tiger Woods' fifth green jacket. Nothing else. They didn't, I mean, the weather, they had tornadoes all over Alabama and Georgia last night, destroying towns and lives. And they didn't even talk about it. They're just like, it's windy. No, we started late. It's, just, it's windy here. And it started late. I'm like, cannot, wait a minute. Like, tons of people lost their homes, businesses, yeah, everything no, else. This and is, all they talk about is, nothing, we're going to start at 10. Let's send Laura Rutledge down there to interview people. Interviewing Troy Aikman for an hour. Interviewing we're, we're George allowed. Kittle. I wanted to, I wanted to no. pull my teeth out of my mouth. No negative stories at Augusta National Golf Club. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, we are here for the pageantry. Down Magnolia Lane. We I wish you would have got talk. stung by a firefly. <laughs> oh, so there you go. The Masters uh, is underway at Augusta. We will have our eyes on it all afternoon. I'll save the baseball till after you talk the game, because I'm sure you're also going to talk the game about this. Uh, you mentioned it, the passing of O.J. Simpson, uh, Scotty, 76 is that what you year old. Is that what passing you want to call it? of O.J. Simpson. Uh, cancer, 76, the family announced uh, earlier today. Um, the look, king is dead. <laughs> OJ, uh, now, I, me and you were talking about this before we came on. What age is like the cutoff where everyone knows who OJ is? And me, 
I I'm I'm gonna be obviously 44 years old this year. So I was right like 14 years yeah, old when that whole thing happened in 1994. So it was I mean we were watching the verdict in school and high school. You know I knew I didn't watch OJ play. I just knew OJ as uh, the he was the color guy on NBC during all the Bill right. playoff games in the early 90s and the Hertz commercials and the bad acting in the Naked Gun. That's all I knew of OJ. But Anybody, me and older, Scotty, absolutely uh, followed that story to know. Well, you got to be at least 45 years old, because if you're 30, you were born the year it happened. Okay, so you'd be 30 today, so you wouldn't know who he was. I'd say anyone that was 15 or 16 years old had to know who O.J. Simpson was and the white Ford Bronco and that he killed his wife and her friend uh, at her Tony House in Brentwood. Let's face facts. Uh, it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. I will never forget it as long as I live. Um, that sham of a trial and the fact that uh, the whole world knew he murdered him. And then they got him off because he had great lawyers and because he had, let's face facts, uh, 90% black jury. They gave him, uh, They gave him walking papers and everyone knew he killed him. Then he lost a civil trial and never paid him a penny, the Goldmans. Uh, the whole thing was unbelievable. Uh, him driving around in that Ford Bronco with Al Cowling, lying down in the back seat. And then when he was in Chicago before that, came back. He was on the lamb. Then they got him. And then that trial. And then Kardashian's uh, father and uh, all the rest of the Shapiro uh, every single person in that uh, courtroom, you remember all of them. Uh, like it was yesterday. It was the craziest thing we ever seen. Then when he got acquitted, uh, it was a it was a racial party. Uh, the blacks went crazy. They were happy that he got off, even though they knew he murdered him too. They didn't care. They just wanted to win. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the same coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in 
on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Catch Sports Rage every night at 10 East on all of our stations, affiliates, radio, TV, uh, Sports Grid, Sports Grid TV, Sports Grid app, sportsgrid.com slash watch, all the OTTs, on the radio, even on Mightier 1090 in San Diego, on Sports Grid Radio, on Sirius Channel 159, and on Sports Byline USA. It's Sports Rage, unequaled, 10 Eastern every weeknight. Uh, And, of course, Gabe's on Coast to Coast every day. Gabe, I want to start with this, and then we'll get into OJ is dead. I want to start with, I went to the uh, Leafs game the other night with the Prime Minister and the First Lady. And let's just say I did not drive home. (laughs) First, the first, the first lady, the first lady can, uh, can bring it as well. I uh, mean, like Cam, Cam's the minnow between the two of them. Like people, like normally, she, it's like, oh, let's see. Yeah. There were people afraid of her. I mean, she is running the roost. That one, dude. She had it she all picked, going. She picked a fight with the wrestler China once in a casino. <laughs> Remember China? Yeah, the big. She's the one of the big, top like, twenty-five of all time, China. The biggest muscle girl in the history of wrestling. I knew her. Cam's yeah, Cam's girlfriend got into it with her at a blackjack table in Vegas somehow. And we're like, dude, that's China. Like, you got to chill out, man. Like, she's gonna mess you up. <laughs> yeah, quite the load. I'm sending him to the game tonight with George Kurtz. I don't think poor Kurtz. Oh, poor Kurtz. Kurtz doesn't drink anything stronger than Pepsi. So Kurtz, Kurtz does not know what he's in for tonight. Let's the just say. Uh, we didn't let's let, let's just say let's be clear here. There were no single poor shots, double shots only. Everything was a double. Everything, Everything was, a, was double. a double, and we went from the minute he got there until the minute I had someone drive me home. I had I had to be driven home. <laughs> so you had to. You were like, I got. You drove there, and you're like, I got to leave so the car here. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter was with us, right? And uh, we're in. You told her you're New- taking the car. Well, we're in Newark, and um, my my buddy was there too, and I said. Uh, I said, uh, well, you got to drive. I'm hammered. And he goes, he goes, uh, well, what would you do if I wasn't here? I go, I'd let her drive. She's got her permit. <laughs> She's in the city driving in people selling crack outside the to arena. New York? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we got, we left the arena and I go like this to, uh, she, uh, Cam and her walking right behind me. She goes, where's the train station? I go that way. <laughs> LA. Swat on the river. Hey, I'm glad he had a good time. He got to see uh, Austin Matthews score a 66 goal. He's awesome. He he is he is flat out. He is fun to watch. To me, he's like I, I mean, honestly, uh, he's like watching uh, Lemieux, Crosby, Gretzky, McDavid. I think Austin Matthews. I'm going to put him in there. Watching him on both ends of the ice, always has the puck on his stick, always getting off great shots, snapshots, one timers, uh, slap shots, great passes. I think their power play. Those four guys, and not even the fifth, but just that Mar- Marner, uh, you know, Nylander, Nylander yeah. him. just having them cycling and watching them pass the puck. It's amazing to me they don't win playoff series. It really is. They are fun to watch. That's an exciting hockey team. Yeah, and they'll be judged on what happens in the playoffs. They got to get through the Florida Panthers, which won't be easy uh, for the Leafs. Uh, but I think Austin Matthews, he's, it's, it's, 
he gets hyped a lot. He gets talked about a lot in 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 in, in the hockey media. But at the same point in time, I don't think people realize just how good he actually is because they really don't win the playoffs. So that's what it always comes back to, right? And hockey, hockey, you can't just be one guy and carry a team. Like that's just it's just facts. But he needs right. to step it up in the playoffs as well. But he's got one of the you know what you just talked about. He's got one of the quickest releases I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, he doesn't wind up. That's why he scores a lot. Like, he literally doesn't wind up when he shoots. It's that Dan Marino flick of the wrist. It's that just sort of, I don't need to wind up. I can shoot it quick enough without winding up, and I can do it with it. Like, it's like an old Wild West, like, drawing a gun or something, dude. Like, he's from Arizona. He scored, like, six straight games, too. He's he's bound and determined to get 70. I think he will. I want to ask you about OJ. Uh, the guy's dead at, at 76. Have you ever in your life seen anything like O.J. Simpson? No, the story is itself. You're going to be able to write theses in colleges for right. in, the, in the psych department and the psychologically and just the amount of lives that were affected, lost in, in, in strange ways, just like an offshoot, Scott, like David Hasselhoff, the road to his alcoholism and he fell off, you know, the rails fell off for his life. He put all of his money into his music career, and he had a big pay-per-view the night of the OJ chase. <laughs> his pay-per-view went down. Like, there's, I saw, like, a documentary on Hasselhoff. He was like, that night, everything changed. And, right, like, it really is amazing. And you're, you're old enough to remember his, his whole story, OJ, and stuff. A, a very complicated, crazy, wild story that's almost like America in one sort of movie. The ups, the downs, the murder, the blood, the passion. Like I said, like, very complicated man, right? So famous, yet he hated himself. He, you know, he had this jealousy thing going, the rage stuff. He really was, like, bipolar you know, before people, like, diagnosed this guy. And he really had multiple personalities, Right. He can show up and play golf with Bob Hope, and then he can go home and strangle Nicole, and he can go do a TV game in the morning, right? And he can do a Hertz commercial, and he can do a movie. Like, he can compartmentalize all these personalities uh, that that he had. Pretty, just so wild. I tell you, Scott, I, I was watching KTLA. I was living in L.A. The, when it happened. Not the night of the chase, but, like, the chase was, you know, after the fact. Right. The, um, the, the actual night, and I remember... I was thinking, no, there's no way. What? Oh, poor OJ. That's the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, my God. I can't believe this. Poor OJ. Right? And obviously, the story starts to unravel pretty quickly after the fight. Great football player. One of the greatest football players ever to play. You know what's crazy to me, too? Didn't he feel, doesn't it, like, wouldn't you have guessed that he was older than 76? Like, he really was, like, in his prime then when all this happened, bro. Right? And we're talking, he was he was in his 40s, man. It's pretty it was, crazy. It was uh, he'd be, I guess, forty six. It was thirty yeah, years like, ago. So, and Scott, uh, I, I never posted once, a picture. I never. If you look at a picture sorry for him, I, I thought he did it from the from the jump. Well, listen, from I'm talking about like the first, like I'm watching the news and they break in. OJ Simpson, Nicole Simpson's just been murdered. And I'm thinking, and my first thought wasn't, oh, OJ did it. Right? Well, it I, was I didn't because know. They're, they had had so many run-ins with the cops. Well, they had domestic, yeah, I know. domestic violence that he had beaten her, allegedly, so many times. And she had called the police so many times and that he had broken into the house so many times. Well, that stuff that came out around. after, though. That but, stuff, no, a lot of it came out after, right? No, people, we didn't know people about in all LA, the details. No, people in L.A. knew that they had been, you know, divorced and, and then got back together and then... Ended it again. The only thing is, I'd and, say Scott they broke up several times, so most people knew that he was beating her. The only thing I'll say is, was he alone that night? That's the only little thing that bothers a lot of people. It was almost impossible to do what he did alone. There's, there's a lot of you know, I mean, there's, there's speculation, but that's just speculation and conspiracies and stuff. But I've always, you know, the. I've always been fascinated by him. Like I said, I grew up watching him my whole life right. and stuff, right? I'm a Bills fan as a kid and the commercials. I just sort of like, he was always in my life, my entire life. Exactly right? Right. He, he was always there. But, it, you know, it always struck me that Night Scott, like the watch riots. There he was on a stage with, with Bob Hope. That's why I brought up Bob Hope earlier, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> so it was very ironic. Like he distanced himself from the African American community so much, and then he was saved by them after the fact. Yeah. There's so much. Johnny Cochran, Johnny Cochran bringing the jury to OJ's house, and they get to OJ's house, and there's not one picture of a black person on the wall anywhere. It's OJ with like Richard Nixon, <laughs> like right. Ronald Reagan. He could not have been like more with country Hollywood. Club -ish. It yeah, was he was total. And Cochran actually told told his assistant, "You got to go to my office right now." He goes, "Get everything African and get everything I got." And he goes, "We're gonna we're gonna change the decorations." That's how like detailed and little things that happened along this trial to sway the jury along it's the crazy way. That all those lawyers are dead except Shapiro. Yeah, and the other guy, the DNA guy, his family left. His wife was like, "You're a scumbag. I'm leaving." After like they all. They went to hell, Scott. They sold like the, you know what I mean? It was one of those. And Cochran died because of uh, cell phones. He was like the first one. He had one of so those now, big, crazy imagine, cell phones. Imagine this guy's murder trial. And now, 30 years later, they've got uh, abortions illegal everywhere. And, uh, and then how about now they're trying the parents of mass murderers. So the kid goes in and kills everybody with a the gun. They blame the parents now. Well, she bought him the gun. Oh, she God. bought him the gun. The mother. Uh, but how about she, this, Scott? She didn't kill him. L.A., you call it Lipstick City. I call yeah. it the city with no angels, right? City of angels, yeah. my ass. I told people I live here years and I never met an angel once. So, yeah. <laughs> but the story of the day today is Otani's interpreter. So the real story is coming out here right now. And this guy bet hardcore, bro. He bet over $180 million over the years. He lost $40 million. And the best part is, Scott, his bets were ranging in range from ten dollars to one hundred and sixty thousand. So, what was the ten dollar bet? I'm guessing he's down a couple of mil, and he saw like a horse at like seven hundred to one. Or a gold Rumor has it he was a big fan of Sports Grid. He loved watching all the shows. He listened to you late night. He even placed most of his bets off of your Sports Grid show. And then he no, he, he mowed through like, sixteen just... million. No, that's what happens. He listened to V-SIM. Hey, enjoy the <laughs> hockey tonight. Is that tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, go blue. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach or in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hovland right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, a better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. 
This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. on coast to coast on the grid uh it's just smarter to be on sports grid right you figure that out like catch up with us because we're over here doing things big things uh mets up 12-4 on the braves in the ninth in hot town royals nine one of the astros in the sixth in kansas city they're going for seven straight open up one nothing on texas at globe in the bottom of the fourth in arlington everything else is at night including my bucks and phillies carver high Yes, that is what we have uh, going on right now live uh, for the baseball. You mentioned uh, Ryan Crazy as a Fox before with the Masters. Uh, he ended up bogeying that hole Damn. where he hit it into the drink. Uh, so he's now down at four under. And honestly, it wouldn't have mattered, Scotty, because uh, Bryson DeChambeau has been on another birdie run and has gotten to six under after making another one on 16. So he is playing some great golf. Uh, out there this afternoon right now you mentioned he's never played well at this golf course mike uh he has not uh he missed the cut last year uh when he was here uh but he is uh refocused and he is playing outstanding here today all right few things with the baseball you already mentioned the games that are going on live we had a few games uh that did get rained out as well with milwaukee cincinnati and minnesota and detroit last night Cleveland beat the White Sox 7-6. to six. It was, Scotty, National Sibling Day uh, yesterday. That is. And you had, and you, I know, and you had uh, Josh and Bo Naylor both <laughs> hit home runs for the Cleveland Guardians. But guess what else they did, Scotty? In the 10th, when they were losing, Josh drove in the run that tied the game, and then Bo drove in the run that come won on, the game on Valley on. Sports. You're lying. Yes. Something's got to give here. Base is loaded. One out. Chance for Bo to be a hero here. Line drive, base hit. Game winner. Bo Naylor with his third run batted into the night. And the Guardians take the series. I got to tell you, uh, I've never heard of him. I knew of his brother. Uh, I didn't even know he had a brother. Okay, that's how much I care about the Cleveland Guardians. No offense to everyone in Cleveland. Uh, have a sandwich. I don't sit around doing nepotism background checks on every player in the in the league. I didn't even know he had a brother. Yeah, he had a brother. Uh, they're on the same team. Uh, so a good win for Cleveland uh, last night there. Also last night, uh, the Yankees were looking for the sweep against the Marlins at the stadium, Scotty. But unfortunately, they ran into your boy Jake Burger time on his Jake birthday, Berger. no less, uh. on Bally Sports Florida. And Jake Berger with a drive out toward left center. Happy birthday, Berger. Three-run homer. The Marlins are teeing off on Marcus Stroman here in the third, and they've got themselves a 4 nothing cushion. Look out, yeah. Jake Berger. I see you, young yeah. fella. So, yeah, c- congratulations on your second win. Anyway, um, I, I, this is why I do this birthday roll call on this show. you got to be very leery of betting against people on their birthday. You see the kinds of things that happen, like with those Naylor twins. Uh, Bacon Berger hits a home run to beat us. I had bet on the Yankees last night. Never bet against guys 
on their birthday. People get all kinds of emotional on their birthday like it's a given, like it's a right for them to have a big game. Uh, people do get very wrapped up uh, in stuff like that, Scotty. Uh, despite the loss last night, uh, the Yankees are out to a 10-3 and start uh, so far this year. Did you know uh, they opened at plus 160 for the AL East? They were plus 125. Now they're minus 110. A little early. Uh, it's 13 games uh, to start making the minus money favorite, especially with how good we know that Baltimore is and even Toronto uh, yeah. as well in this division in Tampa. They want us to crown the East winner uh, here on yeah, April 11th, right? Okay. Not not, not going to happen. Uh, at least it's not going to happen for me. You know that. Uh, I, listen, 10-3 is a great start. Great. It's better than I think any of us would have thought with no Cole. Uh, and Judge has basically done nothing uh, so far, Scotty. For them to be 10-3 and three is outstanding, but... You get, they got proven in October. That's when the Yankees have to prove everything to me. It, this is all fine and good. You got to win these games. You got to get there at the end. But uh, go run over everybody in October, and then I'll be more impressed. That's just how, that's where I am with it. I don't care about any month except October. I, I mean, they were – what were they uh, two years ago? They were like 75 and 30 uh, in July, uh, and they, and they uh, limped to the end uh, and yeah. lost in October. So – uh, I'm not going to get too excited. Just take care of business and then prove it to me when we get later on. Danny Willett, birdies 18 as well, uh, Scotty, the former champ, to get into the clubhouse at four under 68. Uh, so what a start for the past champion, Danny Willett, who I think, Scotty, if I remember correctly, uh, I think he was probably in like the three or 400 to one range uh, to win the Masters. I think somewhere Should have been like that. 4,000 to one. Probably, probably even longer than that. Wow, they're actually showing Phil uh, here, who's one under through 12. A rare Phil, Phil Mickelson actually, shot uh, he, he on the looks, broadcast. He, he, now he finally looks old to me. He does, but there's something about this golf course. And you he saw it last it. year where he finished sec, tied for second. You just. Yeah. He, and he's been awful. Everywhere else he's played for the last year, he sucked. Like every live event, he's Horrible. never in the top 20. But he just shows up at this place, and it's just it's a magical uh, spot for him. It How much really did they is. give him uh, to go to live? $200 million? And he didn't get the highest. Somebody got like half that. a billion. Who was it? They uh, got Rom, half a billion. Rom got, I think Rom's Bustin. gotten the most uh, so far. Rom's probably Bustin gotten the most. Dustin and Rom got the most money? Dustin got a lot also because he – Dustin, I think, got a little extra because he was like the first really big, you know, really big game player in their prime uh, to go over there. So I think Dustin's going to be uh, just fine. That's for sure. Uh, the uh, Padres beat the Cubs 10 to 2 last night as well. A big series, Scotty, for Jake Cronenworth as the Padres played well at home. MLB TV, he goes yard again against the Cubbies. And a fly ball, deep right field, down the line, towards the pole. It is gone. Jake Cronenworth, his second home run of the series and of the year. Yeah, they haven't been that bad, right? Uh, they're, they're playing some good games here and there. They haven't been that bad. They take two out of three from the Cubs. They had the game the other night where they were down 8 nothing against the and Cubs. And they won 9 eight. And they stormed back uh, and ended up winning the game 9-8 with that big Tatis homer. So, uh, good week for the Padres so far. Orioles beat the Red Sox 7-5. to Major League debut for Jackson Holiday, Scotty, and he had an RBI uh, ground out in his debut. So, congrats to him. Uh, Never the trust these uh, same thing, father-son combo meal. You got the yeah, kid you coming get the... in. You know, it's Vladdy's <laughs> kid, this guy, all these kids right. of their great fathers that were great major leaguers, any sport at all. Same thing. In Never trust him. Boozer, now he's got these two kids. They're going to be great college basketball players. Always be leery of birthdays and children of great players. Always be leery of it. Uh, you mentioned that the Royals are winning again this afternoon. Uh, that would be, Scotty, I believe their seventh in a row, right. uh, if I remember correctly, which would get them to 9-4 and four. last week, 25-1 to one to win the AL Central. Uh, I'm sorry, open 25, last week 12, now 7-1. to one. They might have gotten out to a really nice start. It's like the Pirates, the Royals and the Pirates, both having huge uh, Aprils here uh, to get things going. Yeah, the Royals look fantastic, and I'm still not betting on them. 
<laughs> I don't I don't blame you on that one either. Uh, still not betting on the Royals so but far. I bet the All over. Right. Uh, I bet the over. Remember, we took the over with the Pirates and the Royals. Uh, it was like 74 and a half. Horrible yes. number. And uh, we took the and I think the Royals may have been even worse than the Pirates 74 and a half. I could be wrong, but uh, we bet the yeah. over on both. I said the surprise team in that division will be the Royals because they I think Davis Maddock and I had a conversation about all the free agents they signed in the offseason. They spent more money than anybody. Got a couple teams in the central off to decent starts. The Royals, the Tigers and the uh, Guardians all. Uh, right. out of the gates fairly quickly. Uh, the Rangers think they're going to get Max Scherzer back uh, sooner than later. At least he thinks that. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it, uh, because whenever he's pitched in the last two years, uh, he's been washed, uh, Scotty. So I don't I, think it really matters uh, when he pitched. I think, he, I, I think he's finished, you know, too. He, he can't stay on the field and on the mound, and then at some point it's just inevitable you have to say it's over. Sometimes you have to say it. Uh, we'll see if he comes back a little bit quicker than he thought. All right, I give this to you every week, which is the best and the worst uh, money lines and over unders, etc. And I really want to keep giving it to you every week, even though we're only a few weeks in, because if the Pirates and the Yankees are going to be on the top of the charts every week, uh, we just have to keep doing this. Pirates plus six point three units, Yankees plus five point eight units, and then the Guardians, Brewers, and Royals. The worst, Scotty. The Marlins are beating everyone up, minus 7.9 units. The White Sox, Astros, Rockies, and Giants are uh, hurting everybody at the window the first two weeks of the year. Well, there you go. Uh, all you have to do is look at all the worst teams in baseball that never win out of the gates and just bet against them. That's all you need to do. Best over team so far, the Reds. Nine of their 12 games have gone over the number. Uh, including these last few nights against Milwaukee, just screaming over at 9-3. and three. Braves, Dodgers, Cubs, Pirates, and Brewers under. Yankees, Scotty, with that hot start, nine of those games under for the Yankees, uh, the most in Major League Baseball. That's crazy. And then I, what's even crazier is that uh, Mr. 197, John Carlos, has been hitting home runs with his slimmed-down uh, physique. <laughs> He's been uh, he's been better than Judge so far. Judge really has Judge has done nothing. Uh, and Giancarlo's hit a couple homers. He hit that. See that double he hit in the corner the other night he's when they had him all shifted than, to the left he's, side. He's done better than Soto. <laughs> Soto's hit one. He hasn't hit yeah. a grand slam. He's had more power. He hasn't, he's hit more home runs, more doubles. Uh, he's you know it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Uh, only two games tonight. In baseball, a very light uh, Thursday night that we are going to have. And the Pirates, though, are part of it, Scotty. Uh, Pirates are in Philadelphia against the Phillies tonight. Ranger Danger Suarez uh, will go for the Phillies. Jones goes for the Buccos. Minus 145 for Philly, plus a buck 20 for the Pirates. Flat nine the total. I'm on the Bucks. I'm on all the mm. uh, dog day afternoon here. I'm going Bucks, And then the only other game... Uh, is the Baltimore Boston and Boston's at Fenway. I had them last night. They were up like three runs and they lost that game. Uh, that really upset me. I started cussing, but I'm on Boston again tonight. They're taking on the Orioles and I, I got plus money there too, don't I? Yes, you do. Uh, Boston plus 110 with Garrett Whitlock going against Grayson Rodriguez and the Oilers who are, and the o uh, Orioles who are minus 130. Eight and a half is the total. I do like the over again here tonight, Scotty. Uh, between these two uh, with the Orioles and the Sox at Fenway. I'm all for it, and I'm going on both of those uh, money lines with the plus money. The Give me the Red Sox and the Pirates. Uh, and uh, finally, with some baseball, uh, we do have some more details about the Otani situation, Scotty. Uh, of course, the former interpreter, Mizuhara, uh, is negotiating a plea deal. Uh, some more details, more than $16 million dollars he stole, uh, so they're charging him with bank fraud. He allegedly, well, not allegedly, DOJ says this happened. He impersonated Otani on the phone with bank employees to right. trick them into authorizing transactions. That is a no-no, Scotty. Uh, you just can't do that. You can't get on the phone and pretend. That's but it bad. really That's is, your, you know, it was bad, relatively clever. Yeah. <laughs>
Anyway, if you passed him up as a Heisman Trophy winner and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach or in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. <laughs> Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, a better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the center coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. line from this morning when Big Ten Ben, Donnie, and Mark Zinno talked about the Kentucky job. I, you know, I got to wonder this, guys. And Is it fair to ask, is Kentucky still the desirable job that we all assume it is? I know it is, but is it really, if you're looking at, hey, give me the top 10 best jobs in college basketball right now, is Kentucky really there? Like, are, are we yes. teetering on? unequivocally, like, yes. Okay, but. Uh, Without a no. doubt, yes. No. Uh, Alabama's I, better. I I would argue. <laughs> I would. <laughs> These guys are ridiculous. I would argue that it certainly doesn't have the same solidification with inside the top five that it used to, and that there are programs right now that are elevating that look a little bit more attractive. I mean, look, filling John Calipari's shoes is not going to be easy, right? Like you never want to be the guy after the guy. Look, Ben, look at the look on your face. Go, go guy ahead. after the guy. They haven't been in the Final Four since 2015. This is Kentucky. The guy after the guy. They haven't reached the Sweet 16 since 2019. It's not like they're coming off a national championship run. This isn't 2013. Cal is one of the all-time legends in college basketball. If you get Kentucky to the Sweet 16, you will have done more for that basketball program in the last half decade than John Calipari did. It's Kentucky. They don't care about lottery picks. They don't care about first-round selections. They care about winning at Kentucky. That's what I Big am, Blue Nation is. I, I'm not I'm not debating that. I mean, Donnie, back me up here. Like, I mean, does I it feel like Kentucky 
has the same allure that it used to. It always will. Long it after those will. three are gone, it'll still be Kentucky. Uh, and that's just never going away. And it's one of the original blue bloods and will never change just because he was smart enough to get out before they lobbed his head off. He was going on a hot seat this next season like no other. So why not leave and start over a new in Fayetteville and get that fat deal to leave and fat deal to still coach in the SEC and be Chuck in charge? He's schooled them. 